It's you. What the blooming hell are you doing here? Oh, John, am I happy to see you. You running away again? asked John Bemuse. No, I've come to crew to find Fred the 4F, explained Horridge, although it's not gone according to plan. Horridge's driver and fireman stepped down from John's footplate. We haven't been able to find anyone in charge, but luckily we found John, said the driver. John looked over at the line of lifeless locomotives. He looked very uncomfortable. Horridge noticed this. John was as tough as they come, but even he felt nervous at the realisation that lay before those engines. Awful, isn't it? muttered Horridge. Aye, but that's not going to be us, huffed John firmly. We are getting out of here. John buffered up to Horridge, and the two old engines headed for the main line. But as they approached the junction, their plans to head home were thwarted. Engineering works have begun further down the line, explained the signalman. I won't have a road available for the next two hours. I'll just have to sit tight till then, murmured Orich. As John and Horwich returned to the yards, the brush type 4 that had derailed before had been shunted into the works. He scoffed at the two steam engines as they backed in. What are you two relics doing off the scrap line? Who said you could wander around the yards? How dare you, grunted Horwich. We're not wandering, we're going home. You mean escaping. You haven't got a home. You won't have a home if you don't shut your mouth, rapped John viciously. You can't do anything to me. Aye, but I bet you could. Knocking yourself off the rails, trying to knock some sense into yourself, were you? It's you who needs the sense knocking into you, growled the diesel. You're old and past it. Yet you still cling on to life, hoping for that second chance. At least with these, they had the decency to move aside. Don't you talk about them like that, snapped Horridge. Where's your sense of respect? Why, it's not like they can hear me. They're long gone. All of them close their eyes and drift off into a permanent sleep. They were pioneers, every steam engine is. We have paved the way for the future, and now there is no place for you in it, smirked the diesel. That's what is known as a cruel irony. Horridge and John fell silent. Pity you can't just do the honourable thing and accept your fate. John let off steam loudly. I'm not done yet, he thundered. My class has been around for decades and I've lived on through some of the darkest moments in man's history. I'm not going to be told by some poncy stock-up newfangled shoebox when my time is up. I'll be the judge of that. Hear, hear, agreed Horridge proudly. Just then a class 08 shunter pulled into the yards. See those two antiques? They've escaped from the scrap line. They're to be put back at once. No, we're not. We are going home. Yeah, sure you are. Listen here, you. I'm going to knock your head codes out. Threatening behaviour is prohibited. I'll give you threatening. John, send them to the scrapyards. Oh, no, you don't. Oh, yes, you do. Never. Go on. Get them. Scrap them now. That is enough. Out of the darkness appeared Fred the 4F. You are within the presence of a royal engine. Going against the regulations of a royal engine can have severe consequences. The O.H. shunter quickly backed away. Come back, shouted the diesel. Oh, hush now, Basil. You have no authority here. Know your place, Fred huffed firmly. Basil subsided. I find it remarkable how you keep claiming steam engines are useless, and yet here you are, suffering from a derailment and of no use to anyone at all. Basil felt embarrassed, and said no more. I can't believe it's you, Fred, smiled John. You're still here. You're Fred, puffed Horwich, astonished. I found you. Well, more like you found us. Fred smiled happily. It's good to see you again, John, and immensely honoured to meet you, Horwich. How do you know my name? There isn't an engine around who hasn't heard of your story, and may I say, your reputation precedes you. You are one for getting yourself into adventures, I dare say. 
Horridge grinned. And the same goes to you, John. I could hear you arguing before I could see you. John gave a small smile too. He didn't want to admit it, but he was glad to see Fred again. But what on earth I don't understand is why you are here, asked Fred. Horwich explained everything from start to finish. By the time he had finished, the available path the signalman had told them about was almost upon them. Come back with us, pleaded Horwich. They miss you dearly. Oh, if I'm honest, I've been struggling with the freight work without you there, muttered John quietly. But I am needed here, sighed Fred sadly. I'd love to come back home, but I can't just leave. Don't you think I've thought of doing that before? Why not, grunted John. You don't belong here. Your home is with us in Euston. I help run the freight trains here now. There must be something we can do, puffed Horwich. What about your shed master? If we explained, surely he would let you go. It's worth a try, agreed Horwich's driver. But it may take some time, and we could lose our path home. And I don't want to stay here any longer, added Horwich's fireman. Fred wasn't too convinced his shedmaster would let him go, as the crews went to find him. Can't we just go? That Basil is giving me a dirty look. No, that will be seen as kidnapping, replied Horwich. We can't leave here without Fred. Go to the station and wait for me, explained Fred. If I'm not there in time, then go without me. No reason all three of us have got to remain here. Horwich didn't like this plan, but reluctantly agreed. Fortunately for Fred, the shedmaster was doing the night shift and came to speak to Fred as Horwich and John puffed anxiously away. So I've been told you finally want to return home, asked the shedmaster. Yes, sir, if it's possible, sir. In order for this to be carried out, an exchange must be done. I'll have to look through the loco books to see if another engine can take your place. Oh, yes, sir. Thank you, sir, cheered Fred. Uh, don't get your hopes up yet. It is very late and it may take some time. Fred understood, but he couldn't help but feel excited. This was his opportunity to finally come home. Meanwhile, Horwich and John were waiting at the station. John had been turned and was eager to depart, but Horwich held firm. I'm not leaving without Fred. I'm glad you found him, but he isn't going to make it in time. You'll have to come back up for him next time, considered John. There won't be a next time, replied Horwich sharply. Presently, the signal changed. John wanted to leave, but Horwich wouldn't let him. There was no sign of Fred. The signal dropped. Now you've done it, it'll lift again, yeah, but not for long. There was still no sign of Fred. Come on, Fred, come on. The signal rose again. It's now or never, called John. One more minute, we have to go. Suddenly... <coughs> wait, wait for me. Fred came panting up behind them. I knew you'd make it, cheered Horridge. The shedmaster found an engine to take my place, said Fred. I can come home. Fred was quickly coupled up. Come on, snorted John, before the signal changes and we get stuck here. You're right. Let's go home. As dawn broke over Euston Sheds, the engines woke one by one to find a surprise waiting for them. It can't be, whispered Ivert. Impossible, exclaimed William. It is, cried Jimmy. It's Fred! Hello. It's good to be back. The engines erupted into a chorus of whistles. Fred just simply smiled happily. He had finally come home. <laughs>